So there is a lab eight. Um, it's on page one hundred and six, and I suppose it isn't. As you know, I've sent out the second VBA assessment, and so it's not going to be assessed in terms of VBA. It will be assessed in terms of the second written assessment, and I recommend doing this VBA lab to get yourself in gear for that written assessment. Okay, that's so what I got here. Transient state temperature of an insulated rod. Subject to boundary temperatures, okay, we've got, this is saying that uh, for all time, the temperature on the left-hand side of the rod is fixed at 20, and on the right-hand side of the rod is fixed at 80. So the rod is, yeah, okay. It's initially at zero. Mesh the rod into four pieces. So there's going to be a little bit of uh, written work, which uh, we'll do here. So um, I might have to... I'll show some of this to the screen, but then um, some of it will have to go um, into a little PDF or whatever. So um, the rod has got a length of 4.8, so if I chop it into 4, it'll be lots of little 1.2, 2.4, 3.6. I assume that's no uh, issue. So there's uh, the little rod there anyway. Find the steady state temperatures at each of the three internal nodes. So we would have covered this in the, the class, the um, internal temperature, um, sorry, not the internal, the, trans, the equilibrium temperature, thermal equilibrium, is, is just a straight line. Now the temperature goes from 20 to 80. So I, I can draw just a graph of this. So if I do, so this is what the it looks like, straight line. It's a straight line because if I look at, if I put the time derivative equal to zero, so that means the temperature is not changing at time. That's what equilibrium is, the temperature is the same. I get that the second derivative of temperature is equal to zero. And what curve has a second derivative of zero and a line? So I could do y equal to mx plus c here. So the temperature is equal to... Now the slope will be the rise over the run, the, um, how we say, the, what the hell am I trying to say here? The rise is, it goes from 20 to 80 is 60, and the run is 4.8. I don't know, is that a nice number or not? We'll have a look in a second. So I'm doing 60 divided by 4.8. Is that a nice number? It's 12.5. So the temperature is equal to 12.5 x plus 20. So if I... Substitute in the distances 1.2, 2.4, 3.6. I will get the equilibrium temperatures. So if I do that, I'll get um, 35, 50, 65. So you can, yeah, um, yeah, okay. So that's part B done for each of the three internal nodes. Use finite differences to write the heat equation in this form. So this is done in the in the lectures. So it's that the temperature at the next time is equal to the temperature at the po same point as the previous time plus this lambda, which is, uh, what does that look like? K, um, delta T over delta X squared. So the K here is 0 0.3. The delta T is going to be 0 0.5 if you look below. Divided by the delta X is 1.2 squared. And then you've got next point over minus twice the current point plus the previous point over. So this would have been done in, in the lectures, but this is the, the written work. So it's doing this written work. And obviously you should be tried this before looking at this video. If you're just following this, I can't recommend that. But anyway, um, so that's that. And now implement this, implement what we're going to do. Okay, so... What you're looking to do here, and you can do some cool, really, really cool stuff. Now, you could put a time here. Um, you could put time. Keep track of time. Um, I'll probably do it afterwards. But really what you want is temperature uh, 0, temperature 1, maybe I'll call it T0, T0. T1, T2, T3, T4, okay. Um, 
yet. And we're going to be, yeah, okay. So let's see what's going to happen. In the, and there's really cool stuff that you're going to try and do. And I will show it for you at the end. So uh, option explicit all day long. Now, so we have the usual setup, don't we? We have variables, uh, initial values, uh, loop, which includes uh, print and next values. Now, I think is any like you can do you can do this with uh, t zero t one etc. I think you're better off to do an array. So what would be it'd be like t zero to five. I think that's better. That's double. It's going to make writing your code a lot easier. Um. There's an issue about using the like. How do you get? How do you get the old values? So I'll let you think about that. Uh, or maybe t0 t1 is actually easier or maybe or do just t1 t2 t3 and then t0 and t and the other thing can just be constant so it doesn't really matter i mean if you want to get this better you use a rate but anyway uh, what else have we got in here i suppose we have um step size do we need some? no we no it's just a, a counter i think that's all we need initial values so I'll read the question and then in terms of the loop so you yeah it should be obvious obvious what that's going to be do obvious but use old values and then the hardest thing is the the stop have a think okay so that's i think the setup there okay Okay, let's uh, finish this off. So I think I think I'm going to try and do it in a clever way uh, with arrays. So in terms of the written assessment, the most important thing is the written work, which you should have done yourself. But the rest of this will have a little go. Okay. So I think what you could do is dim dblt. I'm going to go with zero to five as double. And I'm actually going to put in an additional thing for time. Now, we can't put in a normal thing for time because we don't know how long it's going to go on for. So what I'm just going to put in is 0 to 1. And I'm going to make that to be a toggle. So 0 is going to be the old. And 1 is going to be the new. And um, we'll see We'll see after this. A, a student showed me this before, and I never actually did it myself, so hopefully it works okay. Intro as normal, as counter, ah, as integer. So, um, that's the initial, oh no, the initial values. Now, we have dbl t zero, so zero, this is the um, point on the left, that's at 20. dbl t, the fifth point over, old value that's at 80 and then the rest there's only three of them but i can write a little for loop so for um dbl i which will have to be another counter i think um equal to x is not appropriate i equal one two three dbl t um dbl i zero we're just putting in the initial temperature of zero next dbl i and you actually need that to be counters or dbl i is a terrible choice sorry because it is a whole number and then intro starts at two as usual okay so the the, the loop so we're going to print the now we, we might have to do some messing around with this toggle thing see does it work so we're going to do so you're going to go from column two to column six i think that's what we have i'm going to put in the time as well yeah we'll put in the yeah the the i suppose the i can do the time that's connected 
Um, so it's int row column one. If you think about it, it's a number of delta, what's the delta t here? 0.5. And so it's going to be something times 0.5. Now think about it. I think it's int row minus two. So in int row two, which is the second row, you want to put a zero. And then the, when it gets to intro equal to three, you want a 0.5. Intro equal to four, you want a, a one. So that's going to do the job there. And then for the other one, you can do uh, another little uh, for loop for int i equal to zero to five this time. Cells uh, int row, so the row, and then the column is int i plus two. How many temperatures have we got? Not as many as I think. There's only five temperatures. Sorry. So it goes up to four. Yeah, that does it. Equal to DBL T. Um, now this, I might get into trouble here in a moment. We'll see int i zero so that's the old temperature um well i want it to be the new temperature don't i i think next int i yeah so i'm probably going to have to do something soon okay so the next values um got a formula there to use i may as well write that down for int i equals zero to four um i want dblt int uh i zero change so that'll just be one to three the alternative here by the way which i should explain is you don't use this arrays you just use temperature one two three and then you write this formula out once for temperature one once for temperature two once for temperature three using the old values okay so um this could be one or zero i'm not sure oh yeah I, okay this, this this is going to be different but we'll, we'll get to that. Okay. So the formulas basically say dbl t int i old and plus, there's going to be a bit of work to do here. So 0 0.3 times 0 0.5 over 1.2 squared. Times um, dbl t int i plus 1, that's the next, minus twice dbl t int i, where we are, 0, plus dbl t int i minus 1, 0. Okay, now we're not quite there yet, but we're getting there. Um, next int i, okay, we also want to put the row up. And we've got a stopping rule to think about. Okay. Um, okay. So th there are easier ways to do this. So just, just to make it clear, the easier way, well, you see, it's not easier if you want to have multiple internal points, like a lot more than three. So alternatively, dblt1 is equal to zero, you'll write, etc. Okay. So you do them individually. Um, and this one, similar story, cells int row, um, say two equal to dblt1, etc. And then this one would look like alternatively Uh, dblt1 is, e and basically write this formula, so that would be, now you'll have to get dblt1 old, so I think where you'd get all the old values, if you didn't do it like this with the toggle, is from the cells. That would be the previous t um, temperature one, plus this here could be the same. And then you'd get these three temperatures also from the worksheet. 
but you'd have a bit of problem because on the very first run you wouldn't have printed them yet so you'd, you'd have problems with this uh, which we'll write down so you'd have to go now this would be the next one over so this would be column three this would be fine this this would be the the 20 degrees you just put in as 20. okay um but careful um might have to manually print print first uh, raw values okay so i'm just putting in those easier alternatives maybe that's the way you did it so uh what i need to do now is probably do um the stopping rule even though i'm not quite there i need I, I what i want to do for the stopping rule is i want to have a counter that counts up when all the stopping rules have been satisfied for all three of them so i'm going to need another one of these so this is called int s for stop integer and the stopping rule is going to go like this so loop until It'll be int s is equal to three. So once all three stopping rules have been satisfied. So the stopping rule is when the difference between the temperature and the equilibrium temperature is less than 0.5. Now you'd probably be better off doing that manually. So the first one, the difference between the first temperature and 35 is less than 0.5 using absolute values. Second temperature and 50 is less absolute value between Second temperature in 50 is less than 0.5. Like we're trying to say until the difference between the running temperatures and these equilibrium temperatures up top are small. But alternatively, we can do it alternatively. We can push ourselves a little bit. So uh, first thing you do is you reset the stopping rule counter to zero. If, now we do four, uh, int i equal to one, two, three. If, the absolute value of a temperature int i now at the moment we're on zero we're going to have a bit of crack here with this zero and one i'm a bit lost in the moment anyway minus now we can actually form we if we if we're clever enough we can kind of get the formula out for this so um like so this 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 is int i equal to one two three four so what I could do is actually I could say 20 plus i times 15 would be the clever way to do this. I'm not saying this is the easiest. You probably need a bit more math to do it this way, but look, it does work. So um, 20 plus int i times 15. I'd say at, at the first one, you'll get 20 plus 15 is 35. At the second one, you get 20 plus 30, which is 50. That's right. So this actually does the job. So if this is less than 0 0.5, then you put the, the, the count for the stopping rule up by one. Okay. And if next int i, and you keep on, and then the big loop will work till it's three. That means that all three of them will have satisfied the stopping rule. Um, now I actually need to, I'm going to, Pause this and save if I can. The other thing we need to do is sort out this toggle. So hopefully I can actually fix it. So this, this, the student, by the way, was absolutely brilliant. This student um, taught me a few things. So we're going to think of zero as old and one as new. Okay. But like, how do we do the toggle? Um, do we just record the old values before we calculate them. I think that'll probably do it. So I think before we calculate the new ones, we'll just record the old ones. Yeah, so for int i equal to one to three, this is all we're gonna have to do, I think. all it is okay right so all you're doing here is so this is printing the time that's okay now we're going, yeah this is printing the 
Now that would be the new time from the previous. Then you're going to record, switch this toggle to zero to count as the old, and now you can you calculate the new one using the old. I think that does the job. So we'll give that a little F8 to see how it goes. And um, then we'll do something really, we'll, we'll do something really cool. So F8, we'll probably crash now, sure, that's the way it goes. F8, 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 F8. So it's, it's put, okay. There's the initial time. There's the three initial temperatures. Now it's going to record those as the old temperatures. Okay, alternatively, you use old variables or you, it's hard to go to the worksheet here because, yeah, so that's, yeah. So calculating the next T1, T2, T3. Um, now it's putting the counter up by one. Now this is the stopping rule. Now none of them are going to be satisfied at the moment. Um, so yeah, look, it's not going up at all. Like look at the intest, it's just stuck on zero. So it's going to keep on looping and keeps on going. I see something going wrong here though. So you see, you're not, the heat is coming from here. It's not coming from the other end. Um, I see two issues, a number, two issues at least. So one is I forgot about the temperatures on the side. That should be four. I think that'll improve things. Now here, if I run it, it, it could crash. So let me just see how it goes now. So it's zero to four, not zero to five. Yeah, that looks a bit better. Now these temperatures are supposed to go to 35. Oh, look at the T0. It's not working. So I think what's happened here is it's actually not printing those temperatures. And that's because I didn't set the, 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 the one version of them to be 20 as well. Because remember, the one version is the one that prints. So now I look a bit better. I'm still not ready to um, run the whole shop though. So I'm still not ready to run the whole thing. Yeah, at least I get in the 20s and the 80s working. Yeah, that looks much better. It'll take a while for it to heat up. I, I, I'll save it. I'll give. I'll. I'll, I'll gamble. F5. Did it terminate? Yeah. Yeah, it did. Now we're going to do something really cool. So you can actually plot this pretty much live. Okay. So let's see how this goes. Okay, we've done that. Do not include rounding error. Yeah, for previous call or define previous variables. Okay, include the boundary temperatures in the worksheet. We did that. Live plotting graphs. This is great crap. So we're gonna we're gonna throw in this work. Okay. So this should go in the loop, I think. Maybe down at the end here. And we'll just see what happens. So what, what I need to do now is I need to plot these, okay? So I think, how does this work now? I'm going to, I'm gonna simultaneously put in the X values and the temperatures. Okay, this is cool. I think. So it's also going to print in here. So I need, uh, this is a printing thing, isn't it? Yeah. So for int i equal to zero to four cells. Now this is going down the rows, so it's so this one is zero plus three, is it? So int i plus three, does that do it? And the column 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 equal to dBLT int i. And I suppose it should be the one, yeah. Next int i. Now, so I just want to see that it prints in here. Yeah, look at it, it's doing it. Yeah, lovely. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to plot this. Now, I might have to do that in uh, with a macro recorder. Temperature versus distance. happens doesn't work okay so putting in that graph i'm going to do with a macro recorder i think this is class live graph so we're going to check that now remember that we we put in this code that's going to delete what's going in so this is all has to go on the macro recorder so oh, come on okay all that's not going live Temperature versus distance. Some are nice. Yes. Um, developer, stop recording. Let's go get that macro. Paul, live graph. Can't remember if I have to. in the argument there or not. No, it looks okay. Now prepare to have your mind blown. <laughs> Shite. Chart two. Oh, um, I'm going to have to not do that. I'll pause it and figure it out. Okay, I figured it out. Um, so this is the problem, right? So in what I did, this has loads of graphs. Okay, and that's okay. But if you want to keep running the code, loads of graphs eventually will um, cause uh, it to crash. So that's where that should have gone. I've recorded a macro. I think I'm going to uh, re-record it. If I can just get rid of all these graphs, and that'll take ages actually. Um, I'm just going to delete this macro. And what that's going to do is it'll include deleting all the graphs. Well, it should if I run it again. Yeah. So I'm going to record the macro. I just want to get a nicer graph. Macro tree is a perfectly good name. Uh, so I'm going to select those, insert plot and I want to get a nice label so live temperature temperature versus distance and now that was macro tree wasn't it macro tree now you're going to see the cool thing I think it's cool. If your machine is very fast, you might want to put a time delay in. Uh, it's probably okay. Now, there's loads of graphs, so there might be a little bit of crashing. Don't, don't worry about it. I mean, look, that's so cool, isn't it? I think so, anyway. Okay, that's um, all the material I'll be doing with G.